This evening, yes. Uh, how do you get from history to beer, right? That's a question I asked myself when this all started. It wasn't intended by any stretch of the imagination. Um, when I started teaching at the University of Colorado about a decade ago, I, I was a specialist in second century Roman architecture and sculpture. That's what I did. Um, now, now I teach all things really classical. I'm, uh, I teach primarily Greek and Roman art and archaeology and Egyptology, but yes, um, as a lot of us have to do when we are first trying to get into the academic world, you got to have another job on the side. And the job I picked up on the side was being a brewer. I started working at Avery about seven years ago. Uh, and now uh, myself and my colleague, who you might have met at the booth, uh, Colin Quinn, uh, also a CU alum, class of 2017, I-5 major. Um, but uh, the two of us run uh, the Innovation and Wood Cellar program for Avery. Now the nice thing about that is uh, that we get to make whatever we want. And so if we get to make whatever we want, I started getting very curious about beer history because I do teach a lot of history and I started finding that there were a lot of gaps in uh, the history of, of beer, but also why beer, right? Why, what's the big deal? Well, one thing that I found really interesting the more I kept looking at it is that it kind of is one thing that brings us all together. I mean, you guys are all here, out here tonight and I drank with several of you at the booth a little, a little while ago. So it is one of these things that brings people together and I found that very interesting. But also what's really interesting about it is that's universal. No matter where you go in the world and no matter at what point in history you go there, that has been uh, kind of the norm. And so back in September of 2016, we started experimenting with this, um, running uh, the, again that, that program. We were able to really start uh, recreating or trying to reinvent some of these ancient beers. And I, I've spent uh, the last several years kind of traveling all over the world uh, researching beer. So it's not a bad gig by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but what we have created so far is a series that we call the Ales of Antiquity series at Avery. Uh, the University of Colorado and Avery have been funding my research, which is, uh, is phenomenal. I, I can't complain. I have two hobbies that I happen to turn into jobs, basically. Uh, the first one we released was Nestor's Cup, an ancient Mycenaean beer uh, that dates uh, to basically the Bronze Age of Greece. Shortly thereafter, I started working also with the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, and we started doing beers for their traveling exhibits. And we created an ancient Egyptian beer, uh, an ancient Viking beer, as well as an ancient Peruvian chicha. Uh, shortly after that, I was uh, actually very oddly in this building, was approached by two monks at something called the World Beer Congress that was held here a couple of years ago, and asked to travel to Italy and, uh, and stay with them in Umbria for a month. And so I did that. I uh, went there a couple, <laughs> a couple of years ago. And uh, I got to learn from uh, uh, my good friends now, uh, the, the brothers uh, of, of Nersha in, uh, in Umbria, and we brought back their recipes and recreated those. Uh, and then we also did a Dead Sea Scrolls beer for the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, an ancient Israeli, Jew, uh, ancient, uh, Israeli Palestinian, Jordanian beer. But then the marketing team at Avery started asking, can you please make something from the United States? <laughs> you know. Uh, it'd be really cool to kind of bring this whole story together. Everybody likes hearing your crazy stories about peoples that they know nothing about, but let's bring it home. Well, what was great about that was I said, sure, I think I can probably do that. I've been working on beer long enough that I can probably do you know, research on just about any topic. So I started working with a friend of mine, uh, a fellow beer historian at Colonial Williamsburg, Frank Clark, uh, invited me out and we did some brewing um, like our founding fathers might have done uh, back uh, several, uh, you know, a couple hundred years ago, back in the 18th century. And uh, I kind of learned the trade. And then I started wondering, well, what would it have been that our founding fathers actually drank? Now, this is kind of a weird question and, and it seems kind of uh, like a hack almost because George Washington in particular, who I decided to focus on, uh, we do have a recipe from him. It's a small beer. He wrote the recipe down for us and I could just revive it if I wanted to. But what's very interesting about this, this recipe is there, there was really no evidence that he produced it on the estate or if he did, it was probably enslaved peoples producing it for other enslaved peoples. So it's curious as to what it was he was drinking, what he was purchasing, and also if he actually was making beer uh, at, uh, at Mount Vernon. Uh, so I went to Virginia and spent a good chunk of time there last year I'm actually going back there to keep working on this research in a couple of months. But uh, what's so interesting is uh, having spent 
the better part of my life handling ancient artifacts, you will never, never shake like you do when you're holding a piece of paper that George Washington wrote on. I don't know why, but it, uh, that's why these, the, the shadows are so terrible of my cell phone taking pictures. But, um, but what you see here is a really interesting uh, ledger that he had taken of beer that he was bringing in, and it says one tierce of beer. By the way, a tierce is 42 gallons. It took my friends at the Smithsonian about two days of research to figure out what that was. Uh, but we figured out that's what it was. Uh, also, in the collections and in the archives at Mount Vernon and Monticello, they opened them up to me to do some really cool research. And it was so cool to be handling these letters. This one, you can see even on the left, says, To His Excellency General Washington. So it uh, wasn't, even, wasn't even president yet. But it was a letter written by his cousin uh, Lund to him about farming on the estate while he was at war. And for the most part, they didn't think he was producing beer there or at least growing hops. Well, this was miscatalogued, and uh, when I found it, the people at, uh, at Mount Vernon got pretty excited because you can see right on it, it talks about the growth of hops on one of the five farms and then underlined for the purpose of making beer. Uh, so I'll be going back to continue working on that here in the next couple of months. Uh, also, what's wonderful is I did crack the code, uh, finally. Um, so George Washington's Porter will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. We're actually doing a big event for it on President's Day. How, how perfect is that, right? Uh, and uh, George Washington's Porter is also the first of the Ales of Antiquity series to go into cans. So you will be able to take some home also from the brewery um, if you come up and visit us. Uh, but what's next? I mean, what, what literally is next? I mean, what other things am I working on? A lot of things. Um, because this series has become so popular, a lot of institutions will contact me and ask me if I'm willing to work with them on things, or I'll go there uh, to do talks like this. And this is the Vasa Museum in Stockholm. Some of you have probably been there um, and working with them. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, they are uh, working with them to recreate a 17th century beer from Stockholm. Uh, also, just returned a couple weeks ago from the UK where I'm working on Roman Provincial Brewing. This is Hadrian's Wall in the Boundary Lands uh, and uh, really cool stuff there that I found. So I'll be continuing to work on that, publishing, publishing some stuff on that as well. But also what's really cool about this project, putting both the University of Colorado and Avery together and them helping fund this research is it's brought a lot of things together. Uh, recently, I signed on with uh, the Global Explorer Division. It's a, it's a research group at the University of Alabama who works for National Geographic. And we will be doing four beers with them in Kazakhstan, Cambodia, India, and Uruguay over the next two years. Um, I also did a, a piece uh, for the Colorado Experience, uh, if you're familiar with that, with uh, Governor Hickenlooper, Charlie Papazian, and a few other individuals a couple months ago, and it sparked a uh, discussion of a Nova episode that may be coming up on recreating an ancient beer. And of course, I will continue to do my work with Denver Museum of Nature and Science, who has been a huge supporter as well. If you want to know what I'm doing, I mean, certainly you can follow me at any of these various places, but the question obviously that's being asked tonight is, is what is next, right? What's next at CU? Well, for me, what's next is the past, right? Uh, the further back we can go and continue to explore these cultures. So if you guys would ever like to imbibe in history with me, uh, you, you know where to find me, for sure. <laughs> Thank you.